Good morning. We're about to enter the Lunar New Year. In a few days, we will celebrate the Year of the Rabbit. Happy Lunar New Year. May you know the Lord's blessing this year. Celebrations like Lunar New Year are wonderful family events. They bring families together to give thanks, to share gifts, and among other traditional customs, to remember. This morning, I want to talk about festivals. The Bible has a lot to say about festivals and feasts. Leviticus 23 describes the main Jewish festivals. These are the Sabbath, Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, the Feast of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles. Each of these symbolised God's sovereignty and saving grace. The Sabbath celebrated the completion of God's work at creation. It marked the end of the first week, when God rested from all he had done. Passover and unleavened bread celebrated the redemption of God's people from slavery in Egypt. In fact, freedom from Egypt became, in the Old Testament, the signal of God's saving grace and the Passover a solemn and joyous reminder of God's covenant with his people. The Feast of Weeks celebrated God's provision. It was a harvest festival. The Festival of Trumpets, occurring on the first day of the seventh month, started a month of sanctification and celebration of God's forgiveness and grace. This seventh month included the Day of Atonement, a solemn remembrance of God's atoning work of salvation, and the Feast of Tabernacles, when the Israelites lived in tents for a week to remember God's guidance and provision in the wilderness for 40 years. Interestingly, the Israelites precisely measured the times for these festivals because God created the sun and moon to serve as signs to mark sacred times, as Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 says. But it's also interesting that once established, these feasts and festivals were not linked to the course of the sun or moon, but were my appointed festivals, the appointed festivals of the Lord, which you are to proclaim as sacred assemblies. So, the Lord says in Leviticus 23, verse 2. Equally interesting, each of these great festivals find their fulfilment in Jesus. As the Lord rested on the seventh day, so Jesus rested in the grave on the seventh day. And the believer's hope of resurrection to eternal life, because of Jesus' defeat of death, is called our Sabbath rest in Hebrews chapter 4. The Passover and Feast of Unleavened Bread is of course fulfilled in the New Covenant, the new promise that Jesus announced with the Lord's Supper. The Feast of Weeks is Pentecost, when Jesus poured out the Spirit upon believers. And the Feast of Trumpets, though not directly mentioned in the New Testament, finds connection with the trumpet blast in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 52 and 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 16, a sound to accompany the gathering of God's people when Jesus returns. The Day of Atonement is of course fulfilled in Christ's sacrifice for our sins. The curtain is torn in two, the way to God is open, and Jesus has gone through the curtain, his blood obtaining eternal redemption. Hebrews 9 verse 12. Finally, the Feast of Tabernacles is explicitly mentioned in John chapter 7 verse 2. At the high point of this festival celebration, Jesus declares, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me 
and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. All biblical festivals and feasts point to Jesus and are fulfilled in Jesus. It's a reminder to us that the rhythm of our daily lives, our weeks, our months and our years are ultimately to be placed in the service of the King of all creation, Jesus. So this Lunar New Year, I invite us to celebrate, but also always to remember that no matter the festival, may our lives point to Jesus and may our lives be in the service of the King. These are his appointed feasts and we are his appointed people. Let's pray. O oh Lord God, we thank you. We thank you that you are God of the seasons, that you're God over our lives, that you're God over each moment. We thank you that because of Jesus, only because of Jesus, we can have a relationship with you. Lord, as we celebrate different feasts and festivals, we would pray and ask that by your Holy Spirit, our lives would point to Jesus and that the way in which we celebrate our festivals and feasts would be symbols of Christ's Lordship over our lives. Help us therefore this Lunar New Year to speak of the goodness of Jesus and the grace of Jesus and the love of Jesus and flood our lives and the lives of all those we know and love with your goodness and your peace. We ask this, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. May you know the blessing of Christ as we enter this Lunar New Year. May the Lord be with you and may you follow him with all your heart today. Thank you.